We appreciate everybody's participation today. We have a great crowd of 200. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, afternoon with us. I'd like to take a moment and recognize our sponsors, a key component to making events like this successful. When I call your company name, if you and your guests want to stand to be recognized, our presenting sponsor is Pottstown Area Industrial Development Incorporated. Our platinum sponsors, Cedarville, Montgomery County Community College, Pottstown Hospital Tower Health, and the Victory Bank. Our gold sponsors, Cody, O'Donnell, Weiss, and Matei, Traffic Planning and Design, Tompkins Vist Bank. Thank you. And our silver sponsors, Citadel, Pottstown Area Health and Wellness Foundation, Diamond Credit Union, and Hobart's Run. I'd also like to direct your attention to the program that was on your chair. There is a list of the expo tables, all of the exhibitors that we were uh, fortunate to have with us today. I want to just thank all of them. You can read the list and hopefully you had a chance to visit with all of them before coming uh, to sit down for lunch. But if you are an exhibitor, can I just ask you to stand? Thank you all. Thank you so much for being a great showcase of Pottstown businesses. This time I'd like to welcome to the podium our presenting sponsor and the Executive Director of Pottstown Area Industrial Development for a special recognition. Thanks, Eileen. Good afternoon, everybody. I am so pleased to welcome everyone to the third annual Pottstown Progress event. There is much to celebrate. So as many of you have heard me say, I consistently push back on the notion that there are no businesses in Pottstown. The businesses may have changed, but they do exist. They are thriving. And today, we are going to recognize them for their, some of them for their commitment as pioneers of progress. So the businesses selected are all chamber members. They are located within 5.5 miles of the borough and are being recognized for the decade that they moved into the borough. So as I call the company's name, if you would please come forward, that would be great. So we are gonna start with 1910 and Dana Corporation. Don't be shy. So with us today is Alex Scotland, and he is with us uh, to celebrate Dana, which has now been in the borough 100 years. Uh, Dana came to Pottstown. Go ahead, you can clap. 100 years. <laughs> So the descriptions of each of the company or the summaries are in your program, so I won't do that, but I wanted to do something a little different to just give you some um, context of what was happening in 1910. So uh, Americans were enamored with the teddy bear, crossword puzzles, and I thought it appropriate ballroom dancing since we're standing in Sunnybrook Ballroom. So congratulations to Dana. Nineteen twenty Smales So 
So when snails came to the borough in 1920, women had just won the right to vote. The first commercial radio broadcast aired and prohibition helped to make bathtub gin popular. So that was very entrepreneurial of them. And here we are with Smales Printery. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, the next is 1930, and the company that we're recognizing for the 30s is Evans, Hausman, and Richard Incorporated. It's Greg Kaplan, the COO and partner, that's coming to join us. In the 30s, FDR became president. At the end of that decade, New York hosted the World's Fair, and the game of Monopoly was introduced. So Pottstown is lucky to have Edmund Houseman still with us Thank today. All right, I don't know what happened to the 40s, but um, we had a hiccup there. So, 1950s, O'Donnell, Weiss, and Mate. So, we have Jack Corey, managing partner and solicitor for paid. In the 50s, it was the era of the poodle skirt, Elvis, and the first modern credit card was introduced into the marketplace. Good or bad, they're still with us today. And so is O'Donnell, Weiss, and Mate, which is a good thing. 1960s. Dick Franz Architects. Mini skirts, tie dye, long hair on everybody was in fashion. And Dick was doing his own design work in the borough, which still can be seen today. Dick Franz Architects for 1960s. Thank you. Nineteen seventies. The nineteen seventies brought us Cody Systems, Fran Hefner. Thank you. We were wearing mini skirts, tie dye. Oh no, we weren't. We were watching MASH, the Partridge family, and that great invention, that great American invention, which, admit it, y'all had one, a pet rock, was one of our favorite things. So we had Cody Systems, and that was quite an invention, yeah, and they really are leading technology. Thank you. We have two recognitions in the 1980s. So first, we are going to call Baus. Over here.
Amy's here, Faust Catering Events. We're so thrilled to have you here. So in the 80s, um, Madonna, the age of Nintendo, that was what was going on, and Faust Catering joined the borough. Thank you. Yes. Industrial investments, specifically Pottstown Industrial Complex. <laughs> Jay Baum. We did it for the 80s. We had two for the 80s. The 1990s, Beanie Babies, Boy Bands, and Fanny Packs. That was a bad decision. <laughs> Precision Polymer. <laughs> Joe Voitilla, everybody. So we've celebrated those through the decades, but we also wanted to celebrate a first wave pioneer. And a first wave pioneer, no pun intended, is Video Ray. Um, when Scott Bentley decided that they wanted to move their company here, it was because of he had been to the theater, so he knew where Pottstown was, and he also was very intrigued with the trail for a quality of life benefit for his employees. So we are happy Scott could not be here today. He is at a conference, but we are happy to have Chris Gibson with us to accept the award. When I think of this next award, a lot of times, catalytic change comes from a whisper, not a roar. And when I think of the Storm family, when I heard the story of what they did to create some of that catalytic change here in the borough, it really spoke to me. So I wanted to get in touch with the Storm family because what they did was they had properties in the downtown that one was sold at a very favorable rate and we now are enjoying great food and libations at Pottstown United Brewing Company because of it. And the other one is because they saw change coming and they were willing to help um, fund, or at least float, uh, the front of a new bank that was coming to town, which was Tompkins Fist. And these are people that made a real difference. It wasn't about making money from their real estate, it was about making sure that they got into the right hands and things were going to continue in a positive direction for Pottstown. So I am thrilled. Um, we had her brother here a couple of weeks ago. He's a Hill alum and he was here for Alumni Weekend and we got a picture with his award. But we have Susan Storb with us today and please give her a warm welcome. The Storb family has done a lot for Pottstown. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, uh, Peggy brought me down from Massachusetts to accept this award, so I told her I'd take a few minutes. <laughs> anyway, I'm really delighted to be here to accept this award um, for what Peggy pointed out, but also um, I, I really have to acknowledge um, that I'm here standing on the shoulders of um, my uh, past relatives who have all contributed to Pottstown. Um, my father had a business on High Street for over 40 years, store of travel service. Some of you still may remember him. 
My grandfather was president of a bank in Pottstown, National Iron Bank of Pottstown, for 37 years. Represented this area in Harrisburg as a state legislator uh, for 12 years. And then my great-grandfather moved here in 1846. And who knows what he contributed, but I'm sure he did something. <laughs> But anyway, this is really a treat and it's really an honor and I'm accepting this on behalf of all the Storbs who grew up in this town and love this town and hopefully have contributed and will continue to contribute. Thank you very much. So before I step away um, and before I let you all eat lunch, I would like to say that uh, PAID is an organization which I am proud to represent, uh, but there are a lot of people behind me and they are board members of PAID. So I would like to ask that all of the board members of PAID that are in the audience to please stand. Very lucky, thank you. I'm really happy uh, to be able to present the two or introduce the next two gentlemen who have been really champions of Pottstown. Um, they come and they don't hesitate when the invitation is out there. Uh, I would say that their colleague, Commissioner Art Cush, is also, she's visited businesses here, she's very committed to Pottstown. And the Planning Commission has done a lot of work with Pottstown, as well as the Montgomery County RDA. So we're really grateful to the support that we get from Montgomery County. And I'd like to introduce to you now Commissioners Lawrence and Commissioners Gale. Thank you, Peggy, for having us here yet again. Um, I do bring regrets from our chair, Val Arkush, who could not make it today but um, said that definitely she's going to try to make it here next year. Joe and I always come because this lunch has the best swag, right? <laughs> Last year we got the sunglasses, this year we get the bandana. But I mentioned when I first came to this lunch two years ago, uh, and for, so for those of you who come every year, you'll hear the story every year now. But when I pulled into the parking lot, I realized that this is where my senior prom was. It didn't occur to me until I got to the parking lot. So I hadn't been here for 28 years. Um, and then Commissioner Gale spoke and said 28 years ago he was born. Um, so this year it's 30 years since my senior prom. So wish Commissioner Gale happy 30th, he turned 30. But since I've been to commi uh, a commissioner, I've been to Pottstown a lot, because Peggy makes sure that we're here a lot. Uh, the last time I was here I got to throw axes and then I got to drink beer. So. I knew that I liked drinking beer. I didn't know I liked throwing axes, so it was great to do that. But I tell everyone across the county that um, Pottstown is on the rise. It's on the move. Under the leadership of President Wien, council here, um, was here a few months ago now uh, for the, the railroad station groundbreaking, which is just so cool. I've been on the train. I can't wait till you can start, stop right there in Memorial Park. Uh, so we're at the county. We're committed to partnering with Pottstown, helping Pottstown. I'm moving forward through the gateway to the western part of the county. Um, so, like I said, we'll be back, but I'll need to have swag every year. So with that, I'll turn it over to Commissioner Gale. Thank you. I'd like to point out, when we did the axe throwing, we drank the beer after the axe throwing. It's a bad combination. But it's always great to be here at the annual luncheon. Um, what a terrific attendance. Uh, compliments to everyone, Peggy Lee and everyone who organize this. Every year it's successful and it's great to have all the stakeholders in the same room to um, champion the future of Pottstown and work together. So that's very valuable to have everyone in the same room. I know you have busy schedules. But to keep this communication and dialogue going on to the future, that's exactly what today's about. The future of Pottstown and the progress of Pottstown moving into the future. So we have to make sure that all these stakeholders work together and communicate in the future with the county commissioners, um, the Pottstown Borough, the Redevelopment Authority, the Planning Commission, so that everyone's ideas and what we think should happen to assist with the revitalization of Pottstown actually happens. And as Commissioner Lawrence said, we see wonderful things happening in Pottstown. The rail line, 
uh, the BMX big event they have every year. People from all over the region and different parts of the country come to Pottstown. It truly is the western gateway to Montgomery County. And the fact that we have the Montgomery County Community College Western Campus right here in Pottstown is a tremendous advantage. And Ken mentioned I'm 30 years old, so I try to make sure that the millennial generation has opportunities moving forward and that they stay in the Pottstown area. That they don't leave for employment in another area, that they stay here, they invest here, they raise a family here, start a business here. And that's something very important to me. And I also have a background in real estate. I have a degree in finance and real estate. I used to work for a home building corporation in their mortgage division. And when I t talk to people in the real estate industry, I talk about all the positive happenings here in Pottstown. A couple weeks ago, I toured the Pottstown High School and their career development program for technical studies. I was beyond impressed at all the resources they have available for even younger generations that know that Montgomery County leads the entire state in manufacturing jobs and make sure that they're aware of those opportunities and that they stay here and invest here. So the Pottstown School District's doing great things. The Pottstown Police Department, I had a nice meeting with the new chief of police a couple months back and everything they're doing to re re reduce any type of stigma that people don't want to invest in Pottstown that they come here, they know it's safe here, and they're making progress in all those areas. So we're all stakeholders in this revitalization effort. It's an honor to help you any way I possibly can to assist um, in the growth of Pottstown, and I'm excited for the future of Pottstown. So thank you very much, and keep in touch. To continue this, it's not one. <laughs> this is the other one. I need that one for later. <laughs> to continue the story of revitalization, we're going to have a panel discussion at today's lunch, something a little different. But we wanted to have you hear the stories and hear the words from the people who are living it every day. So I'm going to take a moment and introduce you to our three panelists who are going to come up and take a seat on the stage. Our first panelist is John A. Bown, Jr. Jay holds a BA in economics from Lafayette College and an MBA from Columbia University. After several years of development experience in the Limpro company, Jay joined Industrial Investments in 19, 1988 and now serves as partner. Jay specializes in the financial and accounting aspects of the company, as well as serving in new property development and property manager roles. He enjoys boating and fishing with his family and friends. Please welcome Jay to the stage. <clears throat> Daniel L. Glennon Esquire, originally from Drexel Hill, holds a BA in Government and International Relations from the University of Notre Dame. He received his Juris Doctor from the Temple University Beasley School of Law and possesses a specialist master's in Public and International Law from the University of Melbourne Law School in Victoria, Australia. Dan earned this degree while attending the University of Melbourne Law School as a Rotary International Ambassadorial <laughs> Scholar. Melissa said I would have problems with that word. He is the founding organizer of the Glennon Firm LLC. And located in Center City, the Glennon Firm is a boutique firm offering a wide range of legal services to clients. The firm was founded on the principles of privacy, dignity, and compassion. In addition, and the reason Dan is joining us on the panel, he is the co-founding organizer of EG Pottstown LLC, multi-level holding and investment company that has completed many development and revitalization projects in Pottstown and continues to pursue even more opportunities in the downtown. Please welcome Dan. And Peggy Lee Clark currently serves as the executive director for the Pottstown Area Industrial Development Corporation. Before joining Page, she held the position of executive director of government relations and special projects and was the assistant to the president of Montgomery County Community College. She came to administration at the college from the faculty ranks. Peggy was a full-time faculty member who taught a variety of courses in the disciplines of marketing and management. Prior to working in higher education, she had a successful 20-year career in the hospitality industry. In addition, she oversaw training, development, and operations for three restaurants and opened a fourth for a restaurant tour in Montgomery County. 
The Montgomery County Board of Commissioners appointed her Monco Works Workforce Development Board in 2017 and to the Montgomery County Commission of Women and Families in 2018. And the Chamber appreciates the dedication and commitment that Peggy makes to our organization as a member of the Chamber Board. She, Peggy holds an associate degree in hospitality management from Montgomery County Community College, a bachelor's degree in organizational management from Eastern University, master's certificate in strategic leadership for women, and a master's degree in strategic management from Rosemont College. Please welcome Peggy. <clears throat> Okay, my first question is for Jay. Your company has owned your site since the 1980s during some challenging economic downturn. Why have you stayed committed to Pottstown? Well, um, so first of all, I want to thank Peggy and Eileen for uh, putting this all together and uh, inviting me to be part of this panel. You're right, when we first came in the early 80s, it was a very struggling time for Pottstown. Uh, as many of you will probably recall, um, two of the largest employers in town had closed. Um, one being Cash from Steel, the other Occidental Petroleum, and it really uh, put a hurt on, on uh, the local community. Uh, we were fortunate enough, um, and we're, 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 our, our family is a, a company, a family company, and we're born and raised in Montgomery County. And uh, it was really my father and a partner of his at the time. Uh, back in the early 80s, uh, saw a property that had been uh, closed for 10 years, that had become dilapidated and an eyesore, uh, but was still within uh, our, an area that we thought uh, had a lot of potential. When we looked at the, the town, we looked at the property, uh, there was a lot of things yet to go. We just had to change it from being a single uh, user uh, site to a multi-user site. And that took time and money and effort, and, uh, and that's what we did. That was the goal. And when you do that, it's not a buy and flip. It's a long-term project. So we, in all these projects we look at, we look at not only the real estate, we look at the community that it's in, we look at the essential backbone of what is here, the utilities, the railroad, the road systems, uh, the workforce, uh, the education, uh, all of which has changed and continued to get better since we got involved in the early 80s. Dan, your first question. Thinking back to your first trip to Pottstown, what made you decide this was the place you wanted to invest? From the moment that uh, my partner Steve Everett and I came to town, um, it's just, it's apparent that there is potential here. Walking down the street, uh, it was actually a, a day not unlike today, it was quite rainy, but the, the the town center is something that not every town boasts. And I've seen what happened in, in media, how positive that's turned out. We were familiar with Phoenixville, New Hope, different areas around the uh, Montgomery County, but not necessarily in Montgomery County. So when we looked at that, we looked at, at these amazing facades on High Street and Hanover Street. It just it seemed like it was about to happen, and we certainly didn't want to miss out on that. And we've gotten just uh, from that point, especially through uh, paid with Peggy, uh, cooperation at every turn. And question, building off of that same question, Peggy, we obviously can't have every investor or uh, people who are doing great things that are out in our audience up on this panel. So what are the reasons you hear from people on an ongoing basis of why they're coming to Pottstown? So I do hear, consistently I hear um, the expression, it has great bones. And so I think that people, when they get here and they see just what a diamond in the rough Pottstown is, I think that they just, their eyes are wide open and they see that not only does it have potential, but it is happening. I think that we've heard for many, many years that, well, it, it's going to happen. It is happening now. 
And that's a pretty exciting time to be here in Pottstown. So I think that some of the challenge is that we are running out of inventory. Um, it's a good thing that we're running out of inventory because a lot of years we have a lot of inventory. So I'm really happy to see that and I think that people want to be here because they want to be a part of something that is exciting to be at. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of good feeling and goodwill and there's a lot of good energy and there's a lot of collaboration, a little healthy competition um, and they want to be here. They want it to happen. And they want it to happen for the people that are here as well. So there are, all, there are very, uh, a lot of great things happening, but uh, I sit right next to Peggy. Uh, our offices are right next to each other, so I hear a lot of stories. Uh, I know a lot of these projects aren't easy, so Dan, what lessons have you learned from redevelopment? <laughs> The, I think the primary lesson we've learned is that there's no timeline that will be honored. Uh, and it, it's not, uh, it, it, it has nothing to do with anything but the reality of, of so many moving parts. Um, best intentions are sometimes not well served by going a, a uh, trying to connect the dots. Sometimes it's a more circuitous sort of approach. Um, and Peggy, again, I don't want to this is not the Peggy show, but it could be, uh, has helped us at every turn. We're, neither Steve nor I are from the area. So coming in with an outsider's eyes and an outsider's understanding of how things work or, or don't work, it turns out that oftentimes they do work, we just didn't recognize it at first. Um, Great point. So building off of the outsider's uh, piece, uh, Jay, you own industrial uh, and office sites throughout Montgomery County. So how does your site here in Pottstown compare and what makes it special? Well, this, this site here is really very unique. Um, if you know anything about the history of what Bethlehem Steel made there, it was the bridge fabrication facility. So a lot of history uh, came through there. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge was uh, made there. And, uh, I think the Wall Whitman and several other uh, world famous bridges uh, came through Pottstown. So uh, it, it's it's unique in, in, in the things that were put in place that we still, a lot of which we still have today. Uh, there are, when we bought it, there were 240 some odd cranes in the facility that would lift up to 75 tons. Um, some of the buildings are 53 feet high, uh, 130 feet wide and a quarter mile long with no columns. Uh, the rail lines that come into the building, at one point it had the largest amount of rail track of any private uh, facility east of the Mississippi. Uh, the utility infrastructure that's there, the uh, uh, electric power grid uh, that's possible there. A lot of that stuff is still there. Um, some of it's been taken out, some of it's been modified, and, and obviously now we have it so it's multi-tenant rather than single-tenant. Um, but those, those things are really unique um, and hard to find in this area. So for any company that needs uh, heavy power, cranes, rail, um, things like that, there are very few options in, the, in all of Philadelphia even. So a lot of times uh, they, they come here and look to us. Now, not all of our tenants use those cranes and use those facilities, um, but they're there and they're a real advantage um, when we can uh, use them. We've had people ask, well, why don't you take the cranes out if nobody's using them? Because if we can get one tenant one time because we have a crane there uh, that nobody else has, why wouldn't you keep it? So we do, we keep them running and, uh, and it's big, big, big advantage over the years. So a lot of times we'll see things that other, other parts of the county can't, can't use uh, or can't find. Can you do a quick summary of current tenants and what those industries look like and who is using your space? Sure, we have, we have a very, uh, uh, very mix uh, of tenants that are there, everything from, from warehousing tenants uh, who just uh, store there, or store plastic pipe, they store uh, automobile, uh, uh, radiators, we have steel companies in there of all different kinds, one stainless steel, uh, one is a company that uh, does plate steel, we have another one that uh, repairs rail cars in there, they actually bring the full rail cars into the buildings and lift them up with the cranes and, and, and we do redo the rail cars. Um, we have other ones that are uh, Zippy Shell is another one for instance, I know is a chamber member here. 
And we have Fab Shops, another company that makes uh, and was part of the construction project for the redo of the Tappan Sea Bridge. They actually made some of the expansion joints that go uh, on the bridge, and, and we had the facilities that they could use with the cranes and so forth. So they made them here and actually had some very large trucks and had to get out on the road with special permits to get the stuff to New York uh, and do it. So they're still in there and operating. The other thing I just want to mention, too, that over the years, we've had several tenants who have started in smaller spaces with us and have grown internally with us to the point then where they wanted to buy, um, build, or build on their own. And a lot of those companies ended up staying in this area. It may not have been in Pottstown, but it might have been Limerick or close by here in Montgomery County. So um, I think, you know, we've seen that trend certainly happen, and unfortunately we're in the process we're going to lose one. Uh, this year that's, that's building a building, but they're, they're making a further commitment here, and I think that's important. Great, thank you. Dan, to date, what has been your favorite project and why? To, to date, the favorite project is, uh, it's actually the Ellis Mills building. Okay. So there are two sub-projects in there, <laughs> but the building itself, if you haven't been in there, um, we uh, tore everything down to the bricks. And you see all this steel in there, you see this amazing structure that was covered by plaster and, and framing and things for a long time. So the building has been, uh, we got the building to where we want it. And uh, we put an axe throwing facility on the second floor. And in the basement and on the first floor is going to be a new brewing company that should open sometime in October. And it's just, again, it's, it's tough to, separate the brewing company from that building because it's so unique and it's we're, we're building that brewing company around what the building offers and it, it seems like there are endless possibilities there. Great. And Peggy, uh, Jay talked a little bit about his tenants, so uh, can you talk to just employment and its impact in the region in Pottstown? So again, um, one of the things that I said this morning was, you know, I push back on there are no businesses. There are employment. There are not the bohemians of yesterday, but there is employment. And so we are seeing a lot of companies come in that are technical in nature. They are companies that employ anywhere between 35 and 60 people. And we continue to uh, do a lot in that effort in that space. We are working on a project right now, which is the Life Sciences Incubator Hub, which the idea of that being on the third floor in um, April's building. Uh, third floor would be an incubator, which would get a highly technical workforce in here, um, and then create spin-off companies that then would need space. So there is, a, there is a process in place for that, and it's going through design right now. The other thing is that there are some traditional employment. So there is a company called Contrast Metals that actually is right down the road on Kime Street from the industrial complex. And Contrast Metals does a lot of um, structural steel for buildings like the Fillmore East. And so those jobs are very well paying jobs. They're good jobs. Like everybody, they have a challenge of finding workforce. And um, I heard the governor speak not long ago, and his comment was, we have the jobs, now we need the trained workforce. And so that's a really important piece to the future of Pottstown, is we're going to have to continue to have relevant education and training and um, Paid is happy that we have something like the CTE at the Potsdam School District and Montgomery County Community College right here to help with that. Okay, okay some closing comments. Jay, I'm going to wrap a couple things into yours. <laughs> so, uh, closing comments about Potsdam future. Um, I'm aware as well as some of the people in the audience, you're a former board member for Potsdam Area Industrial Development. So, can you talk to Paid's involvement always in the community, where you see it changing, and what your observations are for Pottstown's future. Sure, well, obviously I feel Pottstown, the future, the future is very bright, or I wouldn't be here today, and it's, it's great to see as many people involved in this effort. Um, uh, and you're right, I was on, on Paid for several years before, and now I'm happy to say my son is a, is a board member as well, so he's taking up the reins uh, of what I was involved with years ago. 
Um, PAID is really an integral organization as well as the, as the county, uh, Tri-County Commerce, uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I, I think they're facilitators for all of us. They're, they're aggregators for all of us. They're a voice for all of us. Um, I think a lot of times it's hard for an individual business sometimes if they need to promote something um, to get that word out and get it out effectively. They can do a lot of things that we can't do individually, but can do as a group, uh, apply for grants, uh, help us uh, uh, navigate the systems that uh, are in place here in terms of our, our county and, and local governments. Um, and really, uh, I think they also have a, a role in the future and looking forward and setting the stage for what happens next. So I think they've, they've done a good job at that. And I think with Peggy's leadership, that's even um, gone further. And I, and I see more planning. I see more thinking about what we can do next. What, what's the next thing we can do to facilitate something that isn't there yet, but we have to get there. But we've got to do three things to get to the point where we can even think about that. And that, that's where we need to be. So that's what Peggy, uh, to me, is, is doing very well right now. And I think we need to continue to do um, you know, whether that's looking at a business park and, and how we can develop that or expand that, or whether it's a road project um, uh, you know, that needs to be done through the county's help, um, or the federal help, or the, or the local uh, uh, authorities. It's all, it's all part of that, so I think that's, that's a real important function. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Dan, your thoughts on the future of Pottstown? I, I absolutely think it's bright, and I'm encouraged that I'm amazed, actually, how many plans Peggy has the five-year, 10-year, 20-year mark. I think that that's uncommon and it demonstrates a, a, an incredible vision that we, we no sooner have this one project up and running and I hear that, that she's envisioning what, what will Potsdam look like 10 years from now. That's, a, that's a, a vision that I think most people in business don't have. We often look at the five-year mark. Where do we want to be in five years? We can't even conceptualize what we will be doing in 10 years, let alone what the world will look like. But I think that there's there's a very clear design here. And I think to Peggy, it's obvious. She's pulling together parts that are already already there. She's puzzling them together. Uh, to the rest of us, it becomes apparent. But um, nothing but a bright future. So the check's in the mail. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and um, I, right next to yeah, and, okay. and I will be, uh, you know, I'll probably be in the home in 20 years, but <laughs> you can all write me and tell me how it turned out. <laughs> um, Your closing comments. Oh, my closing comments. Okay, so wrap it up. Sorry. Okay. Um, so I encourage you all to look at Paige's annual report. It is certainly not just about me. It is the collective of so many people in this room. And um, I am just really kind of a lucky girl that fell into this job. Uh, I really am very happy to be here and work with so many people that are so committed every day to the success of Pottstown and its progress. So I do want to leave you with a quote. I try to give you a quote every year to take and ponder. This is George Bernard Shaw. And it's, progress is impossible without change. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. So thank you. Can we have a round of applause for our panel, please? Okay, just a couple of things just to close out the program. Again, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the sponsors that are all uh, listed in your program, as well as our exhibitors. Thank you so much for your time today, coming out a little early and setting up your booth. We do have a couple of things. Uh, you'll see momentarily on the screen some of our four-legged models. So tomorrow is the first day of summer. Uh, so we appreciate you taking the dog days of summer, if you want to call it that, uh, taking your bandanas home, putting them on your favorite pet, 
uh, and sending those pictures on, posting them on Facebook, tagging Pottstown Area Industrial Development uh, and the Chamber, and then we can help get them out as well. So everybody, please make sure you take your bandana and your reading materials. Again, the uh, annual report for PAID, it's beautifully done, as well as the program from today's event. We do have a door prize of shirts. While Michelle goes and gets that, we also have uh, some giveaways that were generously donated. Uh, you know that uh, Amy was here from Bows Catered Events. Uh, they were not able to have an expo table because they are booked. So we were just lucky to have Amy here uh, to pick up her award. So they uh, wanted to give something to all of you. So there are cookies uh, in the back if you didn't have enough with your delicious cheesecake. There are also cookies for you to take back for that maybe 3, 3.30 uh, afternoon pick-me-up. There are also uh, I pick Pottstown magnets and sunglasses, uh, so you can feel free to help yourself to those. We do have five uh, I pick Pottstown t-shirts that we're going to be giving away, but then there are also I pick Pottstown t-shirts available in the back for sale as well. Okay, just want to give a quick shout out to the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce staff. Again, things like this don't happen without all of them. So Michelle, Greg, Jen, Melissa, And also, I just want to recognize uh, Peggy now has some staff as well. So Alex Thigpen is a new employee, uh, a couple months now with uh, Paid, as well as her intern, uh, Khalif. I know Khalif's in the back, so thank you for joining us today. Thank you for all your help. Again, just one more thank you to all of you for your time and attention. I know we're a little uh, over 1.30, but thank you so much for sticking around. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you next year. Have a great day. Good afternoon, I'm Amy Awitter from Montgomery County Community College. I'm the Assistant Dean of Student Services here at the West Campus. Montgomery County Community College is excited to be part of this great event today, sharing some information of what Montgomery County Community College has to offer for the community. We have great programs to offer Montgomery County Community College. If you stop by our table today, you'll have a chance to talk to our workforce development and continuing education team. They're here to tell you about all the great opportunities they have, as well as our foundations represented today, and many other people from the college are here to answer any of your questions that you may have about what Montgomery College Community, community College can do for you. I'm Bill Krebs with SCORE for seven years. This is Larry Malcolm, who's been with SCORE for? 30 years. <laughs> That's not true. So, but SCORE is a fantastic organization, national. We're in the local chapter, Tri-County, right here in Pottstown, and a fantastic opportunity to get to know people and also help people start businesses or grow existing businesses. So it's really a good service, totally free, certified volunteers, in all aspects of business. We, we help people think about, organize, and set, do uh, work plans, business plans, that kind of thing. Get them started, help them with advice, all free. Moved our offices recently. We're 212 East High Street, next to the liquor store in the Video Ray Building. Phone number 610-327-2673. That's the office number. We have walk-in office consulting hours every Thursday morning from 10 to noon. So anybody just come, ring the doorbell, and we'll let you in and meet with a counselor. Hi there, my name is Sarah, and I'm from the YWCA Tri-County area, and this is... I'm Jean Kowalski with YWCA Tri-County area. We're here today to tell the community a little, about what, a little bit about what we do. We host two different early education centers, both in Pottstown and in Royersford. We also host two adult education and training centers in Norristown and in Pottstown. We also have a youth empowerment program that is active in six local school districts in Montgomery, Berks, and Chester counties. We're here today to tell people a little bit about new opportunities we have, including the AmeriCorps program, we have multiple opportunities available, both through VISTA and through the AmeriCorps Dawn program. Uh, we also have a, um, our early education center is taking applications for new families for children six months to six years. We also have a um, 
adult education program, which includes English as a second language and high school equivalency preparation. And those programs run in Norristown and Pottstown, and registration is open for new sessions starting this summer. Good afternoon, my name is Rita Peterson and I'm the Development Director at Steel River Playhouse. Steel River Playhouse is located right on the heart of High Street in Pottstown. We are our community's theater. We run programs from education programs, teen intensive workshops, private lessons, to a fully formed black box theater and upstairs loft theater. We have eight main stage shows a year. And we invite you to come to Pottstown, see what we're doing and be a part of your community's theater. Hi, I'm Robert Tapork from uh, teamchildren.org, and uh, we're headquartered in Audubon, PA. One of the things we do is distribute low-cost refurbished computers to families, schools, organizations. And now we're promoting uh, a program called Tech for Vets, where we're helping veterans who need a laptop get one for $100. And we also are promoting the benefits and the power and importance of touch and our book, Hands-On Parenting, is beginning to make a big difference around the world. Hi, this is Bill Wellen here, uh, owner of Fast Signs on Shoemaker Road in Pottstown. Um, uh, next January is our 10th anniversary in town, and we are proud to serve the Pottstown community. Uh, we are indeed Pottstown proud. But we've helped several businesses in the uh, area promote their products, their services, get in touch with their customers, and uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to serve Pottstown for many years to come. I'm Deb Penrod, and I'm on the board of directors at the Pottstown Regional Public Library. We're here today just to get to uh, know some of our members of the public, and with me right now is Tamara from the YWCA. She's been taking a look at our survey, and she was telling me some of her library stories. <laughs> Thank you very much, Deb. And I started off saying that uh, the first question says, what does the library mean to me? And it means a lot to me because when I was younger, I used to visit it just to get storybooks and things like that. And then as I got older, I used it for research. And then as a young parent, I also then started bringing my three children to the story hours that they had at the Pottstown Library and the um, different summertime programs that they had for the children. We would go on a weekly basis and even the science in the summer. And presently, right now, I've been away from the library, but I'm trying to look back into it and see some of the resources that they have for the community. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Beth Euler. I'm with Cedarville Engineering Group. We're an engineering and technology consulting firm located right in downtown Pottstown at 159 East High Street. Uh, we have a full suite of services, including engineering design, survey, environmental, and uh, municipal services as well. Um, here we have a uh, GIS uh, story map that we have created for the um, paid organization that highlights all of the uh, properties available for lease and sale um, in the borough, Pottstown, in the downtown area. Um, and we created this for, for paid use on their website. And this is an example of one of the services that, that we do. Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Lycap from Tompkins Vist Bank. We're located in the downtown Pottstown at 258 East High Street. We offer personal as well as uh, business accounts and commercial lending. And we are very dedicated to the Pottstown area and the Boyertown area. And we're glad to be part of the downtown Pottstown initiative as things are changing and the town is growing. And we, again, we are doing a lot of business with investors in the area. So come in, talk to us, give us a call. We'd love to see you and make sure you're coming to downtown Pottstown for all the new businesses. Hi, I'm Thomas McCabe. I'm here with Joe Corey. We're attorneys at the law firm of O'Donnell, Weiss and Mate, which has been practicing in the Pottstown area for over 60 years. Uh, we also have offices in Phoenixville. We practice, we are your general practice law firm practicing in areas from litigation to banking to business law, criminal defense, family law, estate planning and administration, as well as elder law. Um, basically any legal needs that you have, O'Donnell Weiss Mate can assist you. Uh, American Heritage is happy to be part of Pottstown and, and glad to attend the expo today and, and get the word out to the public. 
We're, we have a branch in Stowe and in Limerick, and we're here to serve consumer needs, business needs. We, uh, we have home equities, auto loans, savings, checking, and we do business lending, and we're happy to be here and, and try to help support the business and grow the community of Pottstown.